This is WSLR 96.5 LPFM right here in Sarasota. And we're heard also on WBPV 100.1 LPFM. And this is the Peace and Justice Report. My name is Bob Connors. Uh, Tom Walker is here and John Dickman is on the control board. And the opinions you hear today are strictly our own and the guest and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoint of the management team, the board of directors, or any of the volunteers affiliated with the radio station. So with that being said, I'm going to bring Tom Walker on board, hey. the main man with the Peace and Justice. <laughs> well, we have a lot of fun. We're live every Wednesday, 9 o'clock from 9 to 10. I hope you'll join us uh, often. Uh, our first guest today, not in the studio, but on Zoom, talking to us is uh, Christine Johnson. She's the president of the Conservation Foundation of the Gulf Coast. She's a fifth-generation Floridian after earning a BS in business administration from College of Charleston and an MBA from University of Florida. She worked in management and consulting with the Fortune 500 companies, but she has worked in our region's nonprofit sector since 2004, first with Girl Scouts of the Gulf Coast of Florida and then uh, 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 with Ringland College of Art and Design. In October of 2011, she was named president of Conservation Foundation of the Gulf Coast. She and her husband, Bill, and their college-aged children, Grace and Tommy, enjoy hiking, camping, backpacking, and being anywhere there's water to swim, fish, sail, or scuba. So welcome, Christine. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here as well as a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, you start, tell us all about the cost conservation of the Gulf Coast. How did it get started? What, what's it all about? So uh, we are a not-for-profit land trust. Quite simply, our mission is to save land. Um, we have a vision. Uh, we have a vision for a future where the human and natural worlds of Southwest Florida flourish together. And in order to do that, our piece of that vision is to save land, and it is to protect the land and water in Southwest Florida for the benefit of people and nature. How we do that is sometimes complicated. Um, actually, most of the time it's complicated, um, but that's not really the, the sexy part. It's the why. Why do we save land? And we save land because we need to have that balance between the built and unbuilt environment. Mm-hmm. We do that because we need nature as much as nature needs us. And we do that because we need to have clean water, places to visit um, nature, as well as places to preserve for nature. Um, there was a, a, an interior secretary uh, years ago, uh, decades ago, actually, that said, you show me a vibrant community that has a good economy, and I will show you a community that has the balance between the built and unbuilt environment. Right. Um I know you preserve a lot of different uh, parcels, and 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 we'll get into a little bit about how you do it and how people can can donate land. But but uh, basically, uh, how many acres roughly, and how many separate pieces of land have you preserved? So we save land in five counties: Manatee, Sarasota, Charlotte, Lee, and Collier. So basically, from South Tampa Bay to the Everglades. Wow! And since two thousand three, when we um, incorporated. Uh, we have saved 51 properties for a total of 18,877 acres. That's almost 30 square miles. Wow. Wow. And are these, um, are these all uh, vis- uh, usable by the public or are some of them still private? No. Some are still private. So, um, a lot of your, your listeners will know Bobby Jones. We just recently yeah. concert Bobby Jones in January with the city. Um, uh, the celery fields in Sarasota County. Yes. Uh, we conserve that, of course, partnering with Sarasota Audubon Society to yep. rewild those parcels. Those yep. are probably most, um, that and, and Robinson Preserve, 150 acre addition to Robinson Preserve that back in 2012 that we conserved. Those are probably the most famous and largest of our public places. Uh-huh. But we also, and we have more. Uh, like our headquarters in Osprey Bay Preserve. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about that in a little while. Uh, yeah, that's a beautiful place. But there are still properties, too, that you can save, we do save, that are private. So, for mm-hmm. instance, Triangle Ranch um, out in, at the border between Manatee and Sarasota County in Mayaka, 1,100-acre ranch. Uh, we protected with the, Saras- with the South Florida Water Management District. 
Um, and uh, it's a private ranch, still has cattle on it. However, mm-hmm. we've saved it with what's called a conservation easement, which is an agreement that runs with the land on the deed forever. Most listeners are familiar with a deed restriction. Mm-hmm. Uh, deed restrictions can be changed. Conservation easements cannot. They are perpetual. Um, they are in perpetuity. Uh, we hold them. We negotiate for them with other agencies like the water districts or counties or state or federal government. And what that does is allow the landowner to continue to use the land how they are currently, like running cattle right. on it. Or, but it usually, almost always, extinguishes the development rights. Right. The houses and so forth. Shopping mm-hmm. centers. Yeah. Um, I know... Um, for instance, your goal, I think for, by 2024, you want to have 11,000 new acres. Is that correct? That's correct. And we're on our way. Um, we've protected almost 7,000 of those 11, that 11,000 goal. Wow. Um, the biggest one was Orange Hammock Ranch down in Northport, uh, 5,777 acres. Uh, but we are chipping away at that goal of 11,000. Like I said, we're almost to seven. And how, do you, how do you find them? People come to you or you go to people? We go both. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, we are contacted almost daily by landowners. We also yeah. pour over maps. We love maps. Um, if you go to our website, conservationfoundation.com, you'll see lots of maps. And one of our visions is to connect up conserved places from northeast Manatee County called Duet Preserve. It's about 20,000 acres all the way to the Mayaka Island of conserved land, all the way through that to Babcock Webb, which is in Charlotte, and then onto the Everglades. And picture a corridor of protected land, both public and private, for people and animals and plants to be able to migrate, enjoy, hike, traverse, as well as move as we encounter climate change. Um, also, we'll have some flooding, of course, with uh, climate change in the rivers, uh, so that's a great vision, which will we will need to use all of the tools in the toolbox. Sure, you got to have those connecting corridors for the wildlife. You have a naturalist on staff to to help with that adv- advice and Indeed. find those corridors. Indeed, we have actually fifteen employees. Mm-hmm. One of which is a uh, director of land protection, Debbie Osborne. She heads up our. Um, our our projects to save land. We have a biologist. Um, his yeah. title is manager, a stewardship manager. Um, so he not only helps Debbie identify land that is rare, has maybe endangered species, plants or animals on it, but also um, manage the properties that we own. We own land in fee, meaning we own all the rights. And we also own conservation easements that we are required to steward Every year in perpetuity, <laughs> forever. And and some of the ones you own are open to the public, I'm sure. Correct. Um, uh, and you're a, la- you're a land trust, right? Is that what the correct term is? That is the correct term. Yeah, there are 1,500 of those across the country. Yours is uh, and, and preserving more than 9 million acres of farmland. So you, you guys are a, a key resource for preserving a natural world. It's, a, it's great you're doing what you're doing. Uh, so and you've already said an owner can keep the land. So uh, do pe- you say people come to you or, uh, or you go to people or both? Both. 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 Uh, we we just completed and are starting to have conversations with landowners. We completed this project where we identified all of the land that could connect up those big pieces of conserved land that I was oh. just talking about. Yeah. Uh, we identified those lands. Uh, we identified the landowners, multiple landowners, usually per parcel. Um, mm-hmm. We've sent out letters. Uh, we've made phone calls. We're now having meetings. Um, and that's how we go about making uh, these big corridors happen. But mm-hmm. then people call us. Um, we had a piece of property um, in Manatee County on the Braden River, which is the drinking water supply for the city of mm-hmm. Braden. Mm-hmm. And the landowner had property, um, a few acres, maybe about 40 acres mm-hmm. on uh, Braden River and said, we want to protect this land. Uh, and so we got to work and we've saved 15 of those and we're working on the remainder uh, with that landowner. Uh, we can be very creative. The, you know, and, and there is some advantage. I know the landowner in theory could sell his land or 
development of shopping center or whatever. But there's also a tax benefit for for the way the way you handle when they donate it uh, to to the trust. It's uh, actually the best tax donation in the tax code. Say that again. It is the best tax deduction in the tax code. Wow. So how it works, if a landowner wants to conserve their land and they want to donate a conservation easement, so you have a bundle of rights as a landowner Mm -hmm. and you want to keep your land, however, you don't want your legacy, you want your legacy to be this land is protected forever, but you get to keep. So you're going to donate some of those rights to an organization like us. Right. How we value that donation is we get appraisal like you would if you were to sell it outright. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the full value. Mm-hmm. Then we negotiate what you're going to give up and we give that to the appraiser. And mm-hmm. the appraiser says, well, if you give up those rights, this is what the property is going to be worth at the end. Uh-huh. The difference, of course, is the donation. Gotcha. And you take that off your income tax in some way in some way it's the best way and that is whatever that donation amount is you get to take that off of your adjusted gross income before taxes 50 percent of your adjusted gross income for 16 years until that donation is absorbed wow okay that's that's a pretty good deal if you want people you know who have that kind of land usually love their land and uh, what a great option for landowners. And, and it really works well with working landowners, like ranches and farms. Yeah, yeah. Because usually, uh, being a Floridian, I knew this term growing up, land rich and cash poor. Yes. And they should be compensated, right, for yeah. giving up something for the community good. It is a community good whether you get to get on it or not when someone wants to protect their land for view or for water or for habitat or for producing our food. Hmm. So, And you're probably in negotiation with a lot of landowners at, at any one time, right? Correct. We have about a dozen on the boil at any given time. Wow. Wow. Um, well, the, you mentioned your headquarters, the Bay Preserve at Osprey. I've been there. It's a beautiful place. We had, we, when we uh, entertained some artists from our sister city in, uh, in China, I was the uh, head of a, a Chinese painting society and we had them down there in their beautiful outdoor grounds, uh, to uh, paint some of our natural scenes. Uh, but the Bay Preserve, that's your big uh, uh, land and building there, uh, sort of a mansion. You, it's open to the public, right? It is a private park open to the public seven days a week, sun up to sundown, for free. If, if you want to see a beautiful place, a beautiful sunset, et cetera, just go down to Osprey and, and to the Bay Preserve. It's on the, on the Google Maps. Beautiful place. And People could take kayaks out of there? Absolutely. People launch kayaks and paddle boards. We have two docks. Um, most people know it as either south adjacent to historic Spanish Point or as where the Sarasota crew row, scholars row out, row out of the, the crew. Um, yeah, I've uh, seen them take their boats out. Yeah, they, they, they keep their boats there, right? But we have people who come on a regular basis to walk their dog, to have picnics, to watch the sunset. They bring blankets and lawn chairs and and just enjoy nature there. It's about four and a half acres. You yeah. mentioned our mansion. That's where our offices are. Uh, we also rent out the facility for weddings yeah. and anniversaries and such. We right. have our own events there, some of which I'd love to talk about when we get to, get to please, that. Please do. I mean, our, our painting society had an exhibit there one time. Uh, you're very generous with your t- – talk about some of your events. We actually have another artist reception Thursday night. Uh, I think that's tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow yeah. night. It is free and open to the public. We are showing Flo Singer Johnson's artwork. Um, she's deceased. Uh, but uh, the Johnson Foundation is um, selling these, these pieces of art. And, of course, 100% of the pro- proceeds come to us. Mm-hmm. That's tomorrow night from 5 to 7. We have another free and open to the, event, um, to the public uh, event coming up April 2nd. That's our Wild About Nature Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, we will have parking on 41 and then trolleys taking us, taking people into the, into our property. Uh, we're going to have a lot of what I would call nature based activities for kids and families. The don't think bounce house. That's not going to be there. Um, but we do have uh, the ability for people to learn how to, uh, use ropes and get in the treetops. 
Uh, we'll also have some booths on native plants, how to have a green yard. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have partnerships with other organizations. They will have booths talking about their work in nature. So that's April 2nd. I believe it's from 10 to 2 on April 2nd. And then we, of course, we have our own fundraisers as well. We just had, as you mentioned, Palm, our Palm Ball, February 5th. Um, we also have uh, a nature lecture coming up April 20th at Michael's on East um, oh. with uh, Jack Longineau. Uh, we, this is a major announcement. Uh, Jack Longineau is an entomologist. He is an, he's called the Ant Man. Um, but he's also the son of Buster Longino, who recently passed. And the Longino family saved their uh, ranch out in East Sarasota County, about 8,000 acres of ranch land. Wow. Oh, we're talking to Christine Johnson, president of the Conservation Foundation of the Gulf Coast. Uh, you have some programs for youth as well. Uh, talk about your uh, your two pro- two programs for youth, Nature Explorers and Youth in Nature. Right. Our Youth in Nature program is a partnership um, that's growing with 16 organizations right now that serve at-risk youth. Wow. Think Boys and Girls Club or Girls, Inc. or Visible Men's Academy or Laurel Nokomis. Sure. We provide programming to those organizations' kids because they don't get outside very often. These are kids that, that maybe live within half a mile of the intercoastal, and they've never set foot in the intercoastal. So we work with them. To get kids outside, we take them kayaking, teach them to fish, take them on hikes. And then our Nature Explorers is for elementary age kids, open to the public, programming that we do to, again, get these elementary age kids outside and learning and comfortable. You know, we are living in an age of electronics and phones and iPads and computers. Right. We need to get kids outside. I'm sure all of us on this Zoom call in this conversation today. Maybe most of your listeners grew up outside. I did here in Florida. Right, um, right. I had to come home when it was dark or when my ha- dad blew the horn, uh, <laughs> go out to the car and honk the horn and I had to come home. <laughs> but we were just allowed to roam and really enjoy nature and be with our friends. That doesn't happen anymore. I know. And so oh. we need to get kids outside because you only love what you know and you only know what you experience. So we're giving these kids experiences. Great point. Great point. Is that every week, all that, those programs or now and then or now and then? And of course they can find them on our website, conservationfoundation.com. Uh, you know, you used one phrase when you talked about kids, those kids, you, you said that you, you would, you address nature deficient disorder. That did tickle me. And, and I, I, a lot of us are nature deficient and, and we, we really realize it when we finally get back into nature and, and get outside or walk among the trees or the plants or at the beach. Uh, I, I sometimes feel nature deficient myself. I'm downtown Sarasota, <laughs> but I'm glad you, you, you get those kids out there. Uh, how often do you do that? Uh, several oh, times? we have um, a wonderful uh, staff member called Sabrina Cummings. Um, and she is out with kids every day, Monday through Friday, every day. We work with these agencies that serve kids or the public um, in Manatee, Sarasota, and DeSoto counties right now. Um, we are hiring a new person called a um, uh, nature interpreter that will also help um, some kids, but mostly adults as well, perhaps yourself being nature deficient in sometimes. Sure. Um, by the way, nature deficient disorder is a clinical diagnosis. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yes. I'll be darned. All right. You taught, you taught us something today. I, I will, uh, I'll make sure that I don't stay nature deficient. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the board of Suncoast Waterkeeper. We worry about the water too, but I don't get out on the water enough. Uh, well, talk about for, for, for a second about the larger issues in the state, the Florida Forever Project. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the way I understand it has been under, underfunded. They have preserved uh, 869,000 acres. Uh, worth three billion, but the, is 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 it true the legislature keeps kind of shortchanging that fund? Do you know anything about that? I do know a lot about it, and it is true. So, if if your listeners have been around since 2014 and they are active voters, they may remember the Florida for a fun Florida forever um, const- mm-hmm. state constitution amendment. Yeah, I voted for it. Thank yeah. you very much. And what you voted for? 
was for um, a percentage of document stamps, which every time a, a real estate transaction happens, a, we have to pay doc stamps, mm-hmm. a portion of those to go into the Florida Acquisition Trust Fund, the land Ac- Florida Land Acquisition Trust Fund, which is Florida forever. And what they've been doing is the money flows into from those doc stamps into the Florida Land Acquisition Trust Fund. And then it flows right back out into the general fund to pay for salaries, trucks, computers in the DEP budget. That is not. It is called the Land Acquisition Trust Fund. Right, right. So to give some numbers around that, every year, especially during this hot real estate market of last couple of years, anywhere from 600 to 900 million have been flowing into the Land Acquisition Trust Fund. Mm-hmm. And our legislature and governor signing the budget have only been allocating 100 million. 100 out of 900 max. Six, exactly. Exactly. Wow. So the whole, that whole program started back in the 1960s. And then it was evolved into what was called the Carl program. And then it evolved into Preservation 2000. And then they renamed it Florida Forever. But mm-hmm. the whole program has been the same and it's, elegant solution to that balance that I talked about at the beginning of the program between the built and unbuilt, right? Mm -hmm. So as you have a hot real estate market, more money flows into it so that you can, you can stay up and keep that balance. When you Mm -hmm. have a bust real estate market, less money flows in. Right, right. It's absolutely elegant. But what they've done is they've said, no, we only need to do a hundred billion instead of what's actually being and we have more than two billion languishing on the Florida Forever land acquisition list. You mean that has been dedicated but not spent? Is that what we're saying? That not dedicated. Okay. It is landowners saying, "I want to conserve my property. I want you to buy a conservation easement, or I want you to buy my land." Yeah. And the state saying, "We don't have enough money to do that because." Ooh. Because they're taking that 900 million or 600 million or 700, whatever it is, and using it to balance the general fund budget. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes too much sense because it's typical of what the Florida legislature has been doing with men- amendments that have been passed over the last six years, whether it's voting rights or fel- ex felons or uh, affordable housing. Affordable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the lottery, same they did the same thing with the lottery. You are absolutely right. Would the, would the, those landowners could they turn to you as an alternative, a second choice? Uh, in and they state? do. Yes, they do. And yeah. they do. The issue is, if you are a landowner and you want to be paid for that conservation easement, we have to find the funding for it. Gotcha. If you want to do a donation, That's, we can do it like that. Yeah. Okay. So the, the money is there in the state to pay for those easements. Yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, I wanted to say that uh, maybe you mentioned, I can't remember, on March 16th, 1130, you have a lunch and learn. To, uh, tell us more about that. Oh, right. Thank you remember for reminding me about that. Um, lunch and learns are a way for people to uh, to find out about us, learn about what we do, our programs, not only, of course, land acquisition, but, of course, as you mentioned, our education programs. Um, this will be the first time we're bringing it back in person. In the, in the past, it was, has been done over Zoom. Sure. Um, we provide lunch, a light lunch. You come in. Um, it's a, an hour to an hour and a half if you want to stay for all the questions that people have afterwards. We give a presentation on who we are, what we do, how we do it, how to get involved. Um, and it's just a way for people to learn more about their community and in specific our, our mission and our vision and how to get involved. What happens when uh, the Conservation Foundation uh, disappears? Or are you intending to, to exist for as long as you can see into the future? In other words, we, we need you to stay in this position and getting this land protected. You're, you're forever, right, in theory? We are forever in theory. And how we ensure that is we're an accredited land trust. There's only six in the state, and we're the only wow. one south of, the, of um, Tampa Bay. Wow. Um, the others are in the north of, of Florida and in the central of the state, Orlando North. Um, and accreditation is a big deal in the land trust world. 
Mm. Uh, you mentioned how many land trusts are in this in uh, uh, United States country. Um, only about uh, I think the number is uh, thirty to forty percent of them are accredited. Mm. Um, I like an accreditation that you have to go through every, reaccreditation every five years. It is akin to a um, IRS audit and a colonoscopy. <laughs> A cross between an audit and a colonoscopy. <laughs> the Land Trust Accreditation Commission comes in and looks over everything. Not only, of course, our financials, but as well our board minutes, um, our land acquisition records. Because, as I mentioned, a conservation agreement is forever, and we need to be able to store that forever. So we also are required to have an endowment for every piece of land that we have conserved that is on our balance sheet. We have mm-hmm. to have the funds to steward that land, protect that conservation agreement in perpetuity. Well, how do you get your money? Do you donation it's solely through donations from individuals? Ninety percent of our operating funds come from individuals. The, uh, the rest of the ten percent comes from uh, what I would call large foundations, like Gulf Coast Community Foundation, yeah. Baransic Foundation, Manatee yeah. Community, um, and then land acquisitions. That funding. Uh, usually the large money come from the county, uh, like Manatee and Sarasota counties, uh, Lee County, Collier County. They have dedicated funding sources. Um, in Sarasota County, it's called Environmentally Land Sensitive Program, um, and it's called, or ESLIP, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. We tap into that sometimes, Florida Forever. Also, mm-hmm. the, the federal government has land acquisition funds. Of course, those take a long time. Um, and so land acquisition is also very much supported by the community. And mm-hmm. primarily, I would say, not only financially, yes, but also from advocacy. We desperately need people to advocate for the environment. It needs to be a voting issue. How would people do that? Ex- uh, expand on that. So I'll give you the most recent history, the Bobby Jones Golf Club. Yeah. So we didn't have to buy that conservation easement from the city. It was because of hundreds and hundreds of people advocating city commissioners to say, you need to conserve this. Yeah. We want this to be forever open space, public open space. Right. And so hundreds and hundreds of people called, wrote emails, wrote right. letters, came to city commission meetings. We did the hard work of negotiating that with the city. But without that public upswell, without that public conserve Bobby Jones now group, I don't think we would have been successful. What's the next thing you'd like us to advocate for? (laughs) That's a great question. Thank you. (laughs) If you have listeners listening right now in Manatee County, I I desperately need people in Manatee County to call their county commissioners and tell them to get going on their ballot measure that they passed in 2020 for a dedicated land conservation fund. Manatee County, just like Sarasota County, voted to tax themselves to conserve land. Mm-hmm. That was in 2020. We're now 2022, and, and the commissioners have not even started the process. So hopefully uh, citizens will call the county commissioners and say, let's get going. Um, it's absolutely. hopefully going to be on the, ba- on the uh, agenda for later this – no, I'm sorry, in April. But mm-hmm. come on. It will be almost two years since – The taxes started for the city, I mean, for the county of Manatee to actually start acquiring. I know Bob Connors will be there at the next count, the city commission meeting to, uh, to do that for you. Isn't that right, Bob? (laughs) I'm just joking, of course, but thank you for that. Chris, we've been listening uh, to Christine Johnson. Christine's the (laughs) president of the Conservation Foundation of the Gulf Coast. And, uh, her website is conservationfoundation.org. Oh, dot com. Dot com. I'm sorry, dot com. And so please go to her website and see all the different activities. And you you can join in, contribute to to help save Florida's land forever. That's the whole point of this Conservation Foundation. Thank you, Christine. Re- appreciate you being on the program. And uh, good luck with your programs. Come back anytime you want to tell us more. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.